Apple blocked green bubbles. Now they're getting investigated. Here's a picture of Uranus. And here's AMD technology on RTX cards. You're welcome. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 19th, and we're gonna start off today talking about Beeper Mini. Again, I'm Kyle. We're gonna be discussing the fact that it continuously is getting blocked by Apple with regards to using iMessage on Android devices. They tried to solve it, then they had to move it over to the cloud version, and it's been a whole various version where once they make a move, Apple's been making another move to block it. And as of yesterday, it was blocked yet again by Apple, but now it's coming with US regulators saying that they want this to stop. A bipartisan group of US senators and representatives are urging the Department of Justice to actually investigate Apple to see if they're, you know, violating any antitrust laws. Okay. So this is coming on the backs of everything that Apple has been doing to shut this down. Apple says it's for security and safety for their users, but a lot of the representatives are arguing the fact that green bubbles by very nature are unencrypted and therefore unsafe. So Apple should want this. They need to give a valid reason why it doesn't work. They don't want it to. Yeah, that's... I mean, listen, I am no man of the law, but they made the technology, no? They have the right? Even if it's not the popular opinion. It depends on whether or not they're violating antitrust laws. If they're intentionally shutting down competition from being able to do things that they otherwise could. We'll see if the Department of Justice actually investigates this. We'll see if Beeper can find another way to reverse engineer what Apple's having, and you'll be able to see today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Tessin. Tessin is a brand of charging solutions for at home and on the go, focusing on combining efficient charging technology with user-friendly designs. Featured here is the Tessin Tezakel Genie CS01 Desk Charging Station. This 65 watt fast charging station features four USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, and three out Outlets. A main feature of this charging station is its small and space-saving design, allowing for multiple devices to be charged while not cluttering your desktop. Additionally, the small form factor makes it a great charging solution for traveling, especially on extended stays or business trips when keeping electronics charged simultaneously is a must, and keeping track of multiple charging bricks gets too inconvenient, or for simply keeping on your desk at home to reduce clutter on your desktop while charging multiple devices. Anti-slip pads on the bottom ensure your charging station only moves when you want want it to, and the 45 degree angle plug ensures that other wall outlets are never blocked. On top of being extremely user friendly, the Tessin boasts impressive features to ensure your device is charged safely. The Tezakel Genie CS01 uses intelligent integrated circuits to protect your devices while they charge, as well as preventing overvolting and overheating to your device. Being constructed with PC 94V0 flame resistant material, temperature resistance up to 80 degrees Celsius, and a gallium nitride chip for fast heat dissipation, the Tezakel Genie CS01 gives peace of mind that power is supplied to your devices safely. For you to pick up your own Tessin Tezakel CS01 desk charging station, click the link in the description below to start changing the way that you charge. Big thanks to Tessin, the Tezakel CS01 for sponsoring today's video. Well, Kyler, you know what you're not gonna be able to charge with that Tessin charger? Uh, your my... Apple Watch, yours specifically, because the Apple can't sell it anymore. The Series 9 and the Ultra Watch 2, have been banned from sale later this month. Apple coming out and saying that because they have lost a patent dispute with the company Massimo, they have to pull these watches from sale by the end of the year. So it looks like- For why? I'll get to that in one moment. Tell but me now. The online shop is gonna stop selling them on Thursday, December 21st, and the physical Apple stores will stop selling them after Sunday, December 24th. And that is because they violated the patent, allegedly, although they've been convicted of it, on the SpO2 sensor. So everything that tells you your blood oxygen level on those watches mm. is a violation of the Massimo patent. And the only thing that would have saved Apple in this situation is if President Joe Biden signs a veto of this ruling, and it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. So it's gonna <laughs> pardon Apple. <laughs> <laughs> in all, yeah, that's essentially where we're at. Uh, President Biden has yet to exercise the veto, so it looks like Apple is preparing for the fact that they are not gonna be able to sell some of their most popular products on the, their stores. All that's gonna happen is they're gonna re-release another watch that does the same thing. Yeah, and it's kind of happening after the holiday season when yeah. they're probably already selling the most that they were going to for a little while anyway, mm -hmm. so it's probably not hurting them too much, but you can't do it. You can't buy it anymore as of next week. I'm gonna have a special thing. I've got a special thing for you. Look at this picture of Uranus. No. James Webb Tele I don't wanna Space look at Telescope. It. I'm gonna look at it. Look at it. That's a beautiful portal oh, anus wow. picture. Look at the holes. Yeah, look at that. So that's the polar ice cap. Did you know that? Oh, I'm familiar with Uranus. 
So the picture that James <laughs> Webb took of Uranus actually has 14 of the 27 moons of Uranus, which is really nice to see. I just, I love everything coming out of the James Webb Space Telescope, and even if it includes Uranus, I'm excited. I love everything coming out of Uranus. Well, hopefully you love everything coming out of my other anus, Reese. This is... <laughs> Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet, and hey, deals. Today, we're starting off with the NZXT Capsule USB microphone for only $49.99, making it $50 off. But then we have one of my favorites back on sale, which is the Royal Kludge M75 Hot Swappable Wireless Mechanical Keyboard for only $79.99, making it $65 off. For honestly, what I think is one of the best looking stock keyboards you can get at the moment. And then lastly, we have this MSI Radio on RX 6800 with 16 gigs of GDDR6 going for only $379.99 with the included promo code and after a $20 rebate making it $130 off. And with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm hand you off back to Brett and Kyla for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Reese I got a heck of a deal for you especially if you're a One Piece fan you like watching the anime One Piece now you get to watch it again. <laughs> if anybody they're, says they like it they're lying. They're remaking it already. <laughs> it just no, ended. I know <laughs> <laughs> There's a remake coming, which I guess could be good. It's taken forever for them to finish it, right? Like it's been out for a while where like in traditional media, it, although it'd be like Fox remaking the first few seasons of The Simpsons just because it's old and outdated. No, they the, what they do with anime like this is they end up with a ton of filler arcs. And because, they remove it, yeah. Yeah, the shows start to outpace the manga because it's based- I thought it was pronounced manja. It's based on- supposed to eat. It's based on the matcha. Okay. But then the show outpaces the matcha. And then you end up with two like alternative timelines, but they try to like hit certain plot points while like the, the show's going on, but then they, so they slow down. I hear you. And this this would be like equivalent to a Dragon Ball Z Kai situation where they remove that kind of stuff. Yeah. But this is a full remake where they are gonna remove that, but also reanimate it. Yeah, it's so like it, Full it's, Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Did was that reanimated? It was, yeah, it was fully redone. Oh, I had no yeah. idea. Oh, so this will be the definitive version, which everybody yes. tells you to watch eventually. Yeah. And it only has 600 <laughs> episodes instead of 9,000. That's better. That's it's shorter, yeah. technically. Well, how many video games have you played? 9,000? Because the Steam Urine Review is now out, in case you want to check that out for yourself. <laughs> uh, I've played 29 games this year. A lot of this is benchmarking for PC build videos, but I think the number one game I played was Baldur's Gate 3. My second most played game was Final Fantasy VIII, but that's because we had a setup where Twitch could actually play the game via chat commands. You look at the playtime, it was 100% in January. I never touched this game again. I hate January. It's cold. My playtime by month, a lot of it was streaming in January. May, I played a lot of games. I'm not exactly sure why. Let me know what your top most played game on Steam this year was. Do you remember what yours was? Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Especially as we stream that on Thursdays. Yeah. And Pat Gelsinger, the CEO of Intel, streamed his initials into every single 386 processor that was ever sold. And I know I made many people angry by calling it 386, but I'm going to continue to do that. <laughs> so PG was found out to be in the actual chips. This is the Ken Sheriff blog who did a super Super deep dive on the circuitry of the 386 architecture. And you can see right there, Pat Gelsinger. This man's the CEO now. He's leaving little Easter eggs for us all along. Parental guidance. That's, yeah, advised. Mm -hmm. Do not use Intel CPUs unless you have an adult around. And do not play Cyberpunk on your RTX 30 series GPU if you want to get faster frame rates because now you can with FSR 3. We <laughs> talked in yesterday's episode of Hot News about how AMD released FSR 3 to be open source. It's available on GitHub and now we're starting to see the fruits of that with many modders implementing FSR 3 into games where it shan't belong. Shan't. It shan't belong there but now you get it in, in games like Cyberpunk 2077 where you can actually accelerate the frame rate on GPUs that Nvidia is trying to lock you out of because you can't use frame gen on anything before an RTX 40 series because you need the optical flow accelerators, which are part of the RTX 40 series architecture. But now with the 30 series, you get the best of both worlds with FSR 3. We have a link to this article in the video description in case you want to try to figure out how to use this mod. Hopefully at some point it will be natively implemented so that you just have to flick a switch in the game settings to turn FSR 3 on to your RTX 30 series GPU. But it is good to see that there are ways around the limitations that Nvidia is placing on their software, thanks to AMD, as it as it typically is. This just feels hilariously overcomplicated to do one simple thing. Yes, 
and that's how Nvidia likes it. You can either overcomplicate it, or you can get people to pay you to give you the easy option. I like your 4070 Ti. I, I know. do like that. And do you like do you like our commenters? Because we're gonna. Read I like a few of them. his name or her. Amuse Walrus. That's actually pretty. Is that a picture of Danny DeVito? I think it is, but it looks like a tattoo or something. Hmm. Okay. Well, they said Intel powered handheld would be very interesting. We definitely need more competition in this growing market. Now that Intel is making GPUs, I really hope their integrated graphics APUs get even better. I, for one, bought a Nova Legion Go soon after launch, and I am loving it. Bada ba ba ba. It isn't perfect. There were definitely issues with it at launch, like not accessing yada yada. I already had a Lenovo yada yada. I would definitely recommend anyone who's getting into the bunch of reasons. I hope to see the space grow. We're finally to the point in tech where handheld gaming PCs are a reality and it can only get better from here. I agree. I concur. Thank you, beloved walrus. I remember whenever, what's the one laptop that has like the little, it looked like the Vita control sticks on the sides. There was a laptop? It was a laptop that was like I that. don't remember this. Whenever I imagined like a gaming Windows handheld, that's the only thing I could imagine. I could not imagine like a Steam Deck or anything like that. And now it's just normal. That was a whole bunch of them. Can you imagine more now? I think... You know, Saber Knight says, from what I've seen from the ASRock leaks, unless I'm reading CPU Z wrong, which is very possible, I don't use it that much, the A700G was limited to PCI Express 4.0 by 16 instead of 5.0, but given all that current GPUs use 4.0, 4.0 will do just fine. I agree. I just want it confirmed. And I also want it on the lower end ones. I want the 8300G to also have full PCI Express 4.0 support, which, given AMD's track record, is not necessarily guaranteed. Hayden saying, also got the unviable black hole shirt too. It's great. Much love. Yours is literally in the dryer right now. I wouldn't. It's probably sopping wet. It's dry. It is. It's in the dryer. Yes. So it's drier. Than it was previously, uh -huh. correct? Yeah. yeah. And then we got YouTube username saying, I miss Kyle on the days he's not here. I'm Kyle! Always means you're in for a good time. We're Kyle. How, with how bad Intel graphic drivers are. Hey, they're, hey. They're improving. They're nice now. They were bad. They're, they're still kind of bad in a lot of ways. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Pardon your French. <laughs> oh, we'll see you back here tomorrow for more honors. You're welcome. <laughs>